Um, I'm probably a, a, an unknown name here. Why would you want to listen to me? I don't fly these wonderful vehicles. Um, three reasons. Um, I'm an industrialist and I did have some success in uh, taking one business from an era startup to selling it for $500 million and uh, had a lot of help from a thousand people doing it. Um, so I have some view about the time it takes to do things and what, you, what correlates with success. It might be wrong, might be right. Uh, secondly, I have a team in my business now uh, of uh, 16 people at PhD level who study technologies that are very close to this and indeed have had some study of this over the last two years resulting in a report and there's detail here of our energy harvesting work. Um, and um, I, uh, I would like to sort of share some thoughts and uh, there was no collusion between me and other speakers so it's quite interesting where we uh, agree or disagree. Um, but um, w we do have some view of this from the point of view of allied technologies. Uh, okay. Um, First of all, um, we're in these allied technologies. I won't waste time. You'll get copies of these slides. I'll go straight to some of the conclusions, which are obviously tentative at a very uh, early stage business like this, although it's been long, around a long time. It's embryonic. We all know that. Uh, but broadly, I think instant availability and continuity of supply are enormously valuable commercially. And... Um, I think that uh, so far, uh, investors need, a, need a views even if they can't be based on an enormous amount of scientific data. So uh, companies like mine do try to form some views and interview you all very intensively and to look at uh, allied technologies. And at the moment, if, uh, when we're forced to sort of say uh, what we think might be the big success, we think ground gen with... Uh, non-conductive tethers, uh, although Google has the finance more than all the rest of you put together um, to pursue the heroic major opportunity, which is remarkable. Very interesting. We, we put at the end of the questions we sat and asked people, um, who, uh, which of your peers do you most admire? Uh, and uh, almost all of them say Google and almost none of them are copying the Google technology. Thought for the day. Okay, and um, flying at uh, 250 meters or low is a serious disadvantage. We've heard why you often have to do it, uh, but um, on current ac uh, evidence, uh, drones probably have a larger accessible market uh, than kites in our view, so can't please everyone. Uh, in addition, um, most of these systems are going to be purchased by organizations, not people. So upfront price traditionally in that situation is not the critical thing. It's the other things you can read on the screen. And um, multiple benefits will lead to much better quality of earnings. You've heard that said in other words by other people. Uh, the off-grid opportunity, I think on current evidence, early days, is at least as large as the grid opportunity, the realistically addressable opportunity. Um, and creative marketing, such as finding gaps in the market and making new things possible, is very, very important. Uh, when Steve Jobs was doing the iPhone, he didn't say, phone, ah, home phone, ah, I replace a home phone. He didn't do that. He did the exact opposite. <coughs> and that's the situation that we have in this industry where what seems obvious is actually not the quick win or even the long-term biggest opportunity necessarily. I, I leave that thought with you. So uh, the sort of risks are, I think most of these projects are badly underfunded. There are at least two organizations in the room beyond uh, Makani X, as we now, now call it, uh, who have of the order of... Uh, uh, five or six million euros, uh, but that's only a beginning in this business. And as Anne Pix has said to this industry, uh, you need at least 100 million uh, to be seriously playing in the game as you come to market. And so fundraising, uh, this room's got to be full of industrialists if this business is going to really get somewhere. Where are they? We have a few and we have a talk by one, but there's got to be 
a change or else. So um, it's uh, very unusual in the world of solar and wave power and regeneration in vehicles or whatever, all forms of energy harvesting, it would be, it's almost without precedent to hear people saying, I've not flown my craft for longer than an hour, or I did fly it overnight, and then say they're going to sell them commercially next year. Uh, that is not normal. Uh, and normally it's a much longer duration, and the parameter I haven't seen on the board often enough so far at this event is what was your longest duration flight? Not how many test hours you've done, that's much less important to me than your longest successful flight actually at this stage. And also um, there has been a lot of nonsense spoken like we're going to replace all conventional wind turbines between in the next 20 years. You are never going to replace all conventional wind turbines. And uh, there has been talk about how if you go above a certain height, you always get consistent wind and it's very, very strong and four times the power. And of course, not all speakers say that and most have a more measured approach. But I think by their works, you shall know them. Follow what people do more than what they say. And partly in order to get wind, uh, KPS moved up to Scotland, kite powers working in the Cape Verde Islands and Kite Mill, South Norway. I can give you three more. So, yes, the wind and, and also the suitable conditions in terms of congestion and aeroplanes and whatever are not always there. So, uh, when we look at this, you're going to get this. This is a reference document. I won't try and go through it. I know the figures are small. I'm trying to give you a bit of extra value here. But broadly, if we look at the intermittent energy from left to right that different energy harvesting systems produce from microwatts to megawatts, uh, the winners are photovoltaics and electrodynamics. This is electrodynamic. Everything you've talked about is electrodynamic. And um, that's what's so wonderful. They're being reinvented. And you see before you on photovoltaic a solar road. They're looking great. They produce about half the energy per watt per meter of a one on your house, but there is massive area available for them. I think they're your partner. I don't think you're, they're the enemy. I think you're, you should be talking to them. Alongside them, you can charge cars inductively as they hurtle along the road, and those two systems can be by the roadside. There are lots of things like that, and if I was going to suggest one that's uh, only invented five years ago uh, that you should be talking to, of the futuristic things, it's called triboelectricity. Triboelectricity on work mainly in America and China and Korea uh, is showing that if you have around your floating platform in the sea uh, a square kilometre of wave blanket, blanket on the wave that's triboelectric, it will produce a megawatt. And it will produce it at different times from your megawatt. And you should be talking to them even at this stage because you're at an early stage they're at an early stage, uh, and there are lots of things coming along. They're even looking at triboelectrics producing a few hundred watts from your car tires. So this isn't jokey stuff, it's quite serious power levels. So moving on, uh, we mainly have these types of option, don't we? And it's just mathematical that from the Delft conference to this conference, we've gone from a minority of the companies presenting <coughs> Uh, talking about uh, drones to a majority, just ticking it off, companies, not universities and research centres, and not the uh, poster presentations. Uh, but it, indeed, if you look at people like eKite, Kite Mill, uh, a number of them started with uh, kites and moved across. So I know this upsets people, some people, <laughs> but I think talking this morning in the break, I discovered two more. Uh, there is a slight trend across, okay? And that was, to some extent, predicted at the last meeting at the Technical University of Delft two years ago. I think rotating tethers are very interesting because they give continuity, just as drones are interesting partly because they can take off in still air, however high up that air goes, uh, to work where they will be. Uh, and... Uh, 
in other ways, they can give you a more continuous power. Continuous power, I think, is very, very important. Okay, uh, and the aerostats are out there somewhere. Um, I think that's how the industry sees you, and we've had other people say that. It's upsetting because uh, I'm just saying this is an industrialist. He, he's, he, you've heard it already, Vestas, $100 million a year R&D budget. That's how he sees you. And we have to recognize, and I support the other speakers, that we should be going into all manner of niches where you have 20 advantages, not cost, okay? In industry, if you're trying to compete on cost, head on with something that's already there. All the alarm bells ring to an industrialist. Cost is as good as the next accountant. Now, we want to look at gaps in the market. Look at Tesla. Just one example. If you look at a, a small power by the roadside, uh, you use your little wind generator and solar, bad weather, good weather, and it gives you 100 watts or whatever it gives you. You don't compete in that and you won't compete in that. It's fine. If you all have these wonderful leisure boats at sea, I'm sure you do, and it has uh, several uh, uh, berths on, and that 1,000 watts is the two, and that's fine. But Tesla, Elon Musk has just said he's going to make all his chargers off-grid. Better talk to Tesla. Who's talking to Tesla? Okay, it's a gap in the market. It's not a destroying something that's already there. And there are other things that a number of you and others not in the room are looking at, which is military and uh, disaster zones. Agricultural robots we've been looking at. Um, the farms are going to be farmed by robots. They need power by the portable power, mobile power, by the side. So to round off, this is one thing. Sorry, uh, Thomas, I stole your picture. You're not even working on this, but I admire what you're doing. Um, that combined with a drone type of uh, uh, AWE uh, could need very little battery and give pretty considerate continuous power. Uh, for those huge farm robots that are going to come in instead of people and a lot else besides. So, uh, I'm not going through it. You'll have it as a reference document, but ships produce the uh, filth for, for, for the, the, the particulate and NOx pollution of three million cars, the biggest ships, one ship, three million cars. And they produce enormous SOx pollution and a considerable amount of carbon dioxide. You can make that zero. You won't make that zero alone. You'll have to work with all the people you see before you on the screen. I don't have time to go through it, but you can make the biggest ships energy independent. How cool is that? So when you look at figures, the figures are contentious, but broadly hundreds of gigawatts are out there in things that the low power off-grid mobile side can attack and hundreds of gigawatts are out there for the on-grid people. And if I was investing my money, I'd go to the left-hand side unless I had the resources of Makani X. Don't nibble, don't be half pregnant. So, uh, in summary, you can do single benefits or strong multiple benefits, reference document for you. And I've finished my talk. Thank you.